Hey, welcome everyone. I'm Gary. That's Beth over there. Over there. Hello. Yeah, over that way. <laughs> yeah, that's Beth. Um, we are getting ready to do the uh, Mystery in San Tropez project because we all have our materials. Now Cindy and Jennifer are doing theirs from Stash, so we'll do a, another video to show you what they're doing once they get that oriented. Then Beth and I have ordered uh, thread and canvas from Needle in a Haystack, and Kathy and Needle in a Haystack are sponsoring this whole project. So uh, please support them up in the upper right-hand corner up there, over there. I keep pointing in the wrong direction. Needle in a Haystack. Uh, go to gayandrogers.com. Yeah, right where Beth's pointing, yeah. Uh, go to gayandrogers.com, and that will, you can get your, um, uh, your chart. And you oh, can have it, you can ha yeah, you can have it like me, which is just paper, or you can be really <laughs> cool, one of the cool kids like Beth, and have it all in a notebook. Yeah, and you want to do this, guys. I, I'm going to tell you, I put it in page protectors. Um, Here, show us, yeah, show guide. us that. All right, so it's just a school notebook. You can, now's the time to get them because they're on sale. I think this is, looks like a one inch, maybe two inch binder. And then... I put page, put them in page protectors, and we'll show you the pattern. But the, and that way you can take out what you need. And there's a stitch guide, so, and that's separate. So you can pull out the stitch guide for whatever section you're working on and kind of keep it a little neater. And then I put fancy post it notes as my um, dividers, but you could, you could buy school dividers, and I might when I go to town on Saturday. <laughs> Beth only goes to town certain times because she lives out in the no. middle of nowhere. So, yeah. um, a trip no to town, to a trip to town is with a list <laughs> and an empty car to bring it all back. <laughs> That's right. That's right. That's uh, right. But yeah, you want to do that because now this is the full deal: ornaments, charts, finishing, and everything. And you can see that that is a lot of pages. So you want to take right. the time to set this all up because. Uh, I'm here to tell you right now, I spilled this once already and it took a minute to get it all back together. So you want to organize this in something that will be stable. And then like Beth said, uh, taking out, if you put them in sleeves, then you can take them out and they're protected. And you want to sit down one night in front of the TV and, and do that because it's, it'll be worth it to you. It's just a lot of pages to keep track of. So, um, right, right. And that way you can do just, you know, if you have just the ornament, like I was working on just the ornament and then I was flipping all these pages, it was a mess. That's when I said, oh, I've got to take the time to do this. Yeah. yeah. And even, so even for me, just figuring out how I was going to go about it and I had pages laid out all over the place. Just, it's, it's worth it. It really is. Mm -hmm. Won't cost right. you much and it's worth it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So people who are uh, first time and first time for a gay and Rogers thing, that is really, I guess, step one after you order your materials is get yourself a, a, a binder and get yourself organized so that you can control those pages because, right. um, yeah, it'll be a, you'll, you'll do it now or you'll do it later when you're really frustrated. I guarantee you. Either <laughs> right. way. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> when you can't find that page that you misplaced someplace. Yep. Yeah. You'll, then you'll do it. So just do it now. Yep. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. Beth ordered... Uh, one of the orange colorways, right. and then I ordered one off of the uh, with the Congress cloth linen. So what we're going to do in this video, uh, both from uh, Neil and a Haystack. So you go to GayAndRogers.com, and that's where you buy your chart. And then she has links. And right at GayAndRogers.com, upper right corner, uh, she has a Fiber Talk logo, so you'll know right where to go. And then. Um, then you go to Kathy Ray and you can order your materials. And I think now she has everything in. Krynic threads were, were a problem there, but she shipped to us, so that means the Krynic threads came in. Right. Um, so you can get your stuff, and we'll have now videos coming up. We'll show mounting on stretcher bars. We'll take you right through it, and we'll get Jennifer and Cindy involved too so you can see what all of us are doing. It just If we do all four of us, it just gets to be too confusing, so we're... Uh, breaking it up a little bit. Um, so we'll take you through it, especially you people who've never done it before. We'll get you set up and get you going. So this was just so we could see what we're starting with, um, and then we'll go from there. So uh, let's uh, start with you, Beth. I'm going to go full screen for Beth. and um, Move my camera. Yeah, move your camera. How's that? 
it should do it. That. Ooh. All right. So there's my package. Okay. And yeah, this is literally, literally we're opening our packages. I mean, I, mine came in a box, but I kept it all tied up. So neither of us has seen what we ordered. No, um, I, yeah. I did cut mine open. So it's a little, I thought, oh, I'm not going to go grab my scissors. No, she didn't put this in a tube and that's fine. I make sure there's nothing else in there. It's empty. That one side. So packaging my invoice, you don't need to see that. <laughs> right. That'll be put to one side. Let's see. Oh. Okay, and there's my I can see my black canvas. I did yeah. ask her to Oops. You asked her to what? Send me two different colors of canvas. I think she was going to send me both the orange and the black. Okay. Because I wanted to see what it was like. Oh, good. Look, she she did the edges for me. Okay. So I don't have to tape them with Yay. blue tape. And that you know that's something when you get this open. Let's let's uh, have a moment on that. Um, okay. Uh, All right. Remove this paper. All right, so she sent me, okay, it looks like she sent me a big piece of black because she wasn't cutting the black small. But there's the, you can see the tape in my on screen. Can you see that orange? Yeah, that, let, me, um, white let, me tape? Turn down, let me turn down the brightness a little bit. I'm going to put go. the orange underneath it. There we go. There you go. Yeah. And, and this is really nice because you do need to do something to the edges. If you don't... Um, your threads will catch on that canvas. It's very rough. And of course you don't need to do anything on the salvage edge. And then when we set up, we'll discuss how, you know, what yeah. side you put that stuff for, on. For, for those who don't know what Beth was holding there, show the salvage edge again. Uh, okay. That's the, the edge. You may or may not get that, um, right. depending on how it's cut. And you, you, you don't have to put tape on that salvage edge like Beth said, but if you don't get that, don't freak out. It's okay. No. She'll she'll have taped all four sides for you. Right. Yeah. And it looks like my orange piece, because I did ask for both, um, because I wanted to see what um, what it would look like um, on the threads. So here's my orange piece of canvas. And that is definitely orange. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is, it is. That's all right. I like it. I like it. All right. Ooh, and I just saw something, and I'm thinking, ooh, I'm going to start playing with threads here real quick. Um, and then in a separate bag, she put the thread. So I'm going to put this to one side All right, let's 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 uh, let's talk about the orange and the black. Now, what what are okay. your plan? What are your plans for that? All right, so I need to figure out which canvas I'm going to do the main piece on. So this orange piece, I think, is big enough. It looks like a 12 by 12. So it's it's big enough for the um, the main piece. Okay. Right? The black, which is, is a lot larger piece, looks like it's big enough for that in the ornaments. For the major piece, main piece, and the ornaments. Okay. So I'm already guessing that I can use... I'm just looking. I'm going to have to put my little, I have to have unroll this. And let's put, I have, I have to, I have to keep it flat. So I'm, I'm just putting things on it so it's flat. And, and there's, that there's another okay? thing. When you get it rolled up like that, uh, and it, it won't uncurl, just reverse roll it and put a rubber band and leave it for a few hours and then it'll come out relatively flat and you'll be fine. Oh, I didn't know that. Oh, yeah. Learn something new today. All right. Yeah. So there. And I have a small piece of black canvas um, that I was going to experiment with. And that's, that'll be, this is the right size for the small ornament, this little black piece. Okay. But this, I'm going to have to try the thread on this orange. Um, so what I'll do is I'll probably do something on an edge and, and just try a few stitches together and see how I like it, especially the... This is, I got, the thread colorway I got was um, pumpkin A. 
the pomegranate thread, which is the lighter one. I think the, the darker thread um, in the other colorway was Ethiopia. So this is pomegranate. That's your, uh, think, water, that's your watercolor. That's the basis for all right. the other threads then. Yeah. Right, right. And then this is, oh, and I love vineyard silk. But I, see how that kind of blends yeah. in? Well, see, I'm and that's so what sure. that's what I, I was like that. that's what I was going to ask you, and and this is part of this project is experimentation and trying things because now you've got orange and black, but then yeah, you you might have to make some thread adjustments here. I'm seeing. Right, right. So this, yeah. these, so I love the Krynek. The Krynek's beautiful. The this braid, I like this dark orange. I like this red. But that vineyard silk might not work. Now, I, of course, have several projects that I had extra threads left over. <laughs> Can you imagine? And I keep them, just so people know, I put them in bags. And this is just Ziploc bags with, um, you know, with the threads divided up, however, whatever works. Yeah, just um, the, that's just the sandwich size Ziploc, right? Right, yeah. right. But look. Okay, so look at this. And they and they don't have to be glad bags. You can go you can no. go to Costco and get the cheapest thing possible. Yes. Right, right, right. Buy a hundred, hundred and fifty and you're good to go. So but okay, but look I just was looking and I was thinking, okay, what about this color in there? Yeah. I think that would work. This uh, and this is a splendor I happen to have. I have a vineyard oh no, this is a threadworks. This isn't vineyard silk, but it's well, it's over dyed vineyard silk from Threadworks. That's too purple. Yeah. It might work, but that looks too purple. But here, here, here's another one, because you know I have all these threads. Right. This is an over dyed vineyard silk from Threadworks, and that might work. Uh huh. Okay, I gotta pull this. Keep keep my threads together. Or I'll be yeah, <laughs> ordering yeah, the wrong don't, color. Don't do that. And, but see, this is this is the fun of it because now when we look at what Jennifer and Cindy are doing, they're doing theirs from stash. So then mm -hmm. they're going through this process for every thread, and right. uh, and we have a start. Like I'm not. I'm just going to go with what Kathy put together. I think we'll have to see. I may change right. too. But in your right. case, if you go with the orange background, you got to make these kinds of decisions. Right. And, and even, okay, so the vineyard silk is a, is a round um, kind of pearl. You can see, see, how I have a piece cut here. And you see how that's a, it's a very soft round pearl. And mm -hmm. I'm not sure what size. So I could go in my stash and if I wanted to, and I could dig and see if I had even like a darker orange color for yeah. me would look better or, or find this pull that, pull this brown out. And I think I'm going to do what um, Cindy Baldwin suggested is pull off a skein, a piece of this and wrap it on a stick or a pencil and see how much of each color is in here. Because mm -hmm. I think I might want to pull, because even if this light brown is too light for me, it needs a, like a dark brown. And I have Crinex too. Oh, there's another Crinex in here that's a different color. Let me pull that out too. Um, I have a Crinex that's a different color. Um, I, I have Crinex in browns. They might be discontinued, but if I'm prudent about it, I think it would work. Okay, so the, here's a nice, so this is more of a red tone. Mm -hmm. And I like that. I like that red tone in there. Yeah, see, when, when you laid those oranges down on that orange canvas, that was my first thought is those uh, brown, uh, you know, I would go right to browns uh, mm -hmm. with those orange ones and let the orange canvas do the do the job of the orange color. But, uh, right. yeah, I, I love Cindy's right. idea of wrapping uh, a watercolors around a pencil just so you can see. Right. Yeah. And, and I want to see how much of each color is in there. Right, right. Of each. Okay, but. Let's move this. I'm going to take this vineyard silk out and that, I mean, the splendor out, which is a pink. These are the colors that are in the pack. And let's just move it to the black. Yeah. Yeah. Because now this will show us 
Uh, maybe take that orange out from underneath it there. Yeah, see? See the difference? Yeah, it's it's night and day. It yep. is just night and day difference. Um, and even, so let's look at that. This is, this is, pro see now this, see now this doesn't go at all, that right. pink. Let's look at that. Uh, what did I just do with it? I should put it away. Here we are talking, and I've lost the splendor red already. <laughs> How can I have done that? Oh, here, because it's to the side. Okay. Now, I thought this looked good with the orange, and it might if I pulled this Avera Swaw out. Mm hmm. Because it still might go. Yeah. With this. But I, again, I'm going to have to pull it. But the orange, I mean, I could almost, I could just stitch this. This I could stitch on the black. Right. Yeah, everything Without would show up. Any, yeah. and, and I really think it would look very nice. Um, I know people are a little, probably a little worried about it being Halloween-y, kind of looking too much like, um, oh, I can only put it out then. But I'm kind of wondering if it wouldn't, um, being on the black wouldn't make it a little more elegant. Mm-hmm. And, and take that away. And then you could still not see, but you couldn't add that brown now. The brown would not work on the black. Yeah. You, 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 you really wouldn't. I don't think you'd like that at all. Yes. And, and you would think that uh, putting those threads on black would make automatically all that would be good, but it doesn't. Um, mm -mm. Even, even the crinic's a little dark, you know, and, yeah, right. you start, you start to right. look at, uh, now this this is sparkly enough; it might work all right, but you might need to move. See, now the only way to really tell is by taking it out of the. Yeah. Oh, they they must have moved to the new spools too. Oh, I was going to ask you. I I was hoping we'd see the new spools. Yeah, it it is. It's got a little. Can you see the little notch? Okay. Yeah. That's different. All right. And these spools are bigger because I was looking at this. And I was like, that doesn't look like a full amount. But I'm like, oh, no, it's the new spool. And look at that. Ah, the labels are better. Excellent. Well, yeah, they were going okay. to the same spool for everything, right? Right. So yeah. they're the same size. Yep. And I don't have any Krynek in this old Krynek. But so this orange... So that's kind of an orangey color. Orangey. Yeah. It shows. I think it, it depends on where it's, it goes. And, and again, it depends on how much um, you add. So yeah. there's that orange color. I've got to figure out how they use this new. Oh, I see. You just, okay, it's like dental floss without the cutter, but you just kind of slip it in there and oh, okay. wrap it around. All right. I don't know. I can't see, see where this... You know, I, I haven't looked, but I don't think she does, has much layering going on, does she? Because, see, that's the other thing with oh, Krynik is, is the Krynik may be going over another color, so... Oh, they, this has to be, because look how this is so thin. This is a number yeah. four. So the background if, may, might be just immaterial. It's what thread it's going over. Right, and I don't, I don't have a picture of her piece... Yeah, I, I don't have. But she always does. She always does layers. Yeah, <laughs> that's what she's known for. Right. So, so the the point is that you can't assume that all of these threads are going to lay right on the black or on the orange. Correct. You have to see yeah. where they're being used because, like that, mm -hmm. Krynik may be going right over the orange thread, and will stand out quite nicely. Right. Right. Or, or you might decide, oh, no, no, that's not going to work. You're going to have to find a substitute. And, yeah. and for those who are new to this, the other thing I was going to say is, okay, so you've got this vineyard silk and you decide that the or this whatever color you have doesn't work. Um, like I was saying, a pearl cotton is about the same weight. You can go to um, uh, a big box store or, or, you know, if you need to substitute, you know, and yeah. you, you decide that that color doesn't work. Um, but you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to spend some more money on, on, a, on another silk. Go get some DMC out of your stash and find a color that'll work. 
right. because you can substitute. It doesn't have to be the same exactly. Same key, thread. Yeah, key being that it be a round thread as opposed yes. to a flat yes. thread. Yeah. Right, right. So I, I like it on the black, but I want to play with it on the orange because yep. I think there's potential there, especially with this this colorway. I, yeah, I see, do like this colorway. I really like that too. And, and it seems to me that uh, those other threads aside, it's worth uh, cutting off a piece and just exploring what's there because there's a lot going on in that over dye. Right. And then, and then it'd be interesting too. Um, I know she didn't have the darker um, Ethiopia in, with, uh, or the darker color, whatever it is for watercolors. And I was going to, I was going to ask her, that when she got it in just to send me one skein of it because i think that'd be again another experiment you know yeah um even if i just did a small ornament and, and for my own pleasure you know right using this all i did was change the watercolors kept everything else the same what happens mm -hmm. what happens yeah so but yeah, this is this will be fun. This will be fun, and I I really I really think I'm gonna have to go and and dig out some um, brown. I I'm pretty sure I have some sort of brown, some more of this crinic. Yeah. Um, that's a that's a little bit different, and then um, and then some pearl in the brown. I know I don't have vineyard silk in brown. But that's all right because I, right. I do love this vineyard silk. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Yeah. Well, see, all right. So, so the basically here you have the basis for either ground cloth color, and mm -hmm. and uh, and an opportunity to make some adjustments to um, I don't want to say improve it, but certainly to change the look. Uh, right. Right. Yeah. And 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 I think that's. That's going to be the fun part of this. I noticed that Gay Ann posted she bought two colorways from Kathy. Um, I think she bought a, um, I don't know what color she bought, but that makes sense to me because if you mixed um, this one, I didn't check out all the colorways, but if, like I said, if you just, if you were at a store and you, if I was at Needle in a Haystack, I would have pulled, I probably wouldn't have pulled this orange. Mm -hmm. I would have pulled a, I would have pulled a brown. Or I would have pulled more of this red color in, right. um, and I would have I would have kept some orange because there is obviously some in there. Yeah. Yeah, and and it, that watercolors, yeah, you, you really got to pull a thread out and because mm -hmm. you and get play it, with it a little bit all wound up like that, you get an idea, but you really got to see how it transitions and and. Uh, what, what colors right. are in there? Yep. Right. Cool. All right. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Okay. Let's go right. to go to mine. All right. So, and you can gonna... see now. Now this is this is the uh, Congress cloth um, lin linen Congress cloth, whatever uh, whatever she called oh, it. Oh so, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, um, what does she do? <clears throat> Thank you. Rattle, rattle. Sorry about the rattles, people, right? <laughs> hey, goes with the gig. It is what it is. Goes with the gig. Okay, oh, this is going to be fun. Okay, now... I asked oh, her, pretty. yeah, I asked her, let me get, just a minute, let me get this completely unwound here, there we go. I asked her to send me double of the, um, of the Congress cloth linen because now I want to do, um, I want to have a doodle cloth for experimenting before I decide what the final piece is. So this <laughs> is not showing... Um, let me see if I can help this a little bit. Probably not. Yeah, it's Did not showing. Did you tape your edges? Uh, no, no. 
No. Okay. This is this is more of a like a cream color. It doesn't show that, but it's a cream color. But um, it is definitely more flexible um, than uh, regular Congress cloth by a long okay, shot. Okay. Do you have do you have a piece of white paper? Uh, I do. Yeah, that would probably help you, right? Yes, now you can see that it's cream. Yeah, okay, good call. So, and much more uh, flexible, much more linen-like by far uh, than, um, and see, and she didn't tape this, but I wouldn't tape this either. I'll, um, I'll uh, overstitch this on my machine because okay. this is this is flimsy enough. This this uh, will actually be better served, I think, if I overstitch it on the sewing machine rather than tape it because it's not very rigid. So uh, that's okay. That's so that's yeah, good move. So she sent me. Uh, yeah, I mean it's a big chunk here, but yeah, that's that okay. Is a big piece. <laughs> yeah, and she did have. Uh, you can see that line. Uh, she she did give me a, a, a bit of a discount because that line is kind of right through there. So I'll have to work around that. I'll have to see how much of an impact that has. But she acknowledged the flaw in the cloth and um, mm -hmm. gave a little discount for that because it's going to dictate how much I use on either side because this... <clears throat> uh, this side here is just shy of 11 and the usable side on this is about eight and a half on that side so I'm gonna have to have to play around well, what I should be able to uh, have this line be in the part that you would cut off for framing or whatever right right and especially since you're using I mean the on 18 count you need 12 by 12 stretcher bars so I'm thinking you need something smaller for the right so yeah, that's that'll be perfect. Right. Actually, it's not a big deal. Yeah, no, I, I think I'll have, be able to cut around that quite easily and not uh, really not waste anything. And um, uh, if I can, I'll, I'll like I said, I'll put that in the two or three inch uh, side piece that um, that you would cut away or it would go behind the mat or whatever. So, um, right. So right. not a big deal, but it was really nice for her to give me a little discount. And yeah, for those who wonder, yeah, uh, we we paid for this just like everybody yeah. else. We paid, <laughs> so yeah, um, yeah, we uh, yeah. So uh, so that's the. Uh, I really like this though. This is going to be nice. I mean, this is really no different than a uh, a heavy um, a heavy linen. Really, twenty four. Yeah, it's Congress cloth, twenty four count. She sent me twenty by thirty six. Um, but yeah, it's, it feels just like a, a heavy linen. So oh. it'll be interesting. Now you got me wondering, now you got me wondering about doing, um, white work on it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I can see why when she had a chance, why she grabbed this stuff. Uh, yeah. without, without a doubt. Yep. I can see. So... So it's going to be interesting, I, and that's why I wanted to do this. I wanted the experience with this cloth when she described it the first time. So, um, so that's yeah. that. All right. So let's look at the threads now. <clears throat> and I uh, let's see. All right. So. Oh, okay. So petite treasure braid. Okay, so this must be my Bravo. this must be my watercolor equivalent here. Yeah, the Bravo. Bravo um, A one twenty two. Okay, I think you're gonna need to pull it up a little higher. Yeah, there you go. There. Okay. Mm-hmm. So Bravo A one twenty two. That's my. That's clearly my uh, over die, and then. Well, there's. Yeah, there's two of each of these, so I'll just set. So there's that, and that, uh, and that. Eight oh four. 
the whatever's underneath the the third one down can barely see it. Oh, okay. Then I'll overlap them. Here, let me do this. Are you seeing them now? Uh, they need to be a little bit higher. There you go. Okay. Uh, 899, so that's 804. <clears throat> and then uh, uh, 56. And then this is the Averisois here. Oh, okay. So it's the 100 slash 3 then. Uh, you are correct. Oh. Okay. Hmm. Yeah, so, so that's silk. Uh, treasure braid in uh, in a gold or kind of a, I guess a gold kind of a. It's a green. It's a, green. It's a it's a green. Okay. Yeah. And then two. Um, uh, Those silk. are both like a creamy, kind of yeah. cream colored. Yeah. Uh, twisted silk, uh, grandeur twisted silk, and then uh, subtlety uh, silk pearl number twelve, and then okay. uh, then silk lame braid. That's a pretty blue. And then an elegance silk pearl, and then this that looks bravo. Like the maroon. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be nice. Which I think you're gonna have to do the same thing, yep. where you unwind it and um, and yeah, see these two right here. Right. Yep. Because they're just gonna blend, but it depends. You know, they're gonna be. Are they on top of something? Because there are, there is some layering. Right. Um, but yeah, those two are, are the red flags, yes. All right. So if you, if you, if you lay that on top of, think if you're laying one of those strands on top of the, um, the LeMay, Silk Lame Braid or the, I can't see them now. Um, they're too low, the oh. colors. Uh, yeah, there you go. The Elegance. Is that a stranded? Uh, twisted Silk. Okay. Silk so, Pearl. It's a Silk Pearl number eight. I'm wondering. So if you're, but if you laid some, you're laying some stitches on top of the other. Mm -hmm. So. So that'll be a non-issue. Is is that centered now for you? Yes. Yeah. If, if they're if they're going over the top, it becomes a non-issue on any of those threads. Correct. But if they're going right on the on the uh, ground, then yeah, it's going to be have to take a look. Right. It, that that'll be hard. And the other only other thing is is if you use them for doing some sort of pulled work in the center or if you pulled something i don't i don't know yeah i don't remember it i don't think it has any pulled work no no i don't think so it's i don't very simple uh, she doesn't do that but yeah it'll depend because yeah there's some layering so it'll depend um how it's used mm -hmm. but uh you and, know and, I, and again when we get started, we'll talk about this, but if she says to layer with one thread, like I know she says to layer in a, a pearl number five, and you think, oh, I don't I don't really want to layer with that. So pull a different thread and layer with it. It 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 it's your piece. Right. So like if, if you laid the silk lame braid down in long stitches and then laid some of the one of those white pearls on top. That would be really pretty, right. I think. Right. It'll just depend. Yeah. Right. You have to be willing to play with this piece. Yeah. And, and and she, again, Gay Ann is, is one of those people. She'd be like, oh, you're going to, you know, going to change it? Great. <laughs> yeah. Go for it. So, uh, so I'm, I'm happy with that look. Mm-hmm. Right there, but but uh, we'll you know we'll see. I'm happy with it reserving the the uh, right to adjust those, particularly these two. Um, mm -hmm. They may can need you some. Unwind, can you unwind some of your Bravo? I have that ability. 
because I'd like to see what the colors are in that. It's really hard to see when it's all bunched like that. Still, it's very dark. Um, well, there's. I can't. I can't see the color differences. No, on there. The hang screen. on, just give me give me a second here, because there's the the dark. It, there's long stretches of each color. There. Okay. Because yeah. this. Still, yeah, it's hard to. Well, it's just hard to see what the different colors are on my screen, and that's what I was trying to yeah. get because I can't. And and maybe when we um, show it. Yeah, it's hard to hard to show that, but you know, and this mm -hmm. this might be uh, uh, another uh, opportunity to use the Cindy pencil technique and yeah, yeah, and wrap that and see it. Because this, each of these colors are, are uh, quite long and the transitions are rather abrupt. So that, that right there is a good, well it's almost a foot of that oh. color. And then there's some transition, but then this one, there's, you know, there's a foot and a half. Okay. So... It's, um, you know, there, there are long yeah. stretches of the color, so it'll be interesting. Uh, but it, but if, if I decide to manipulate the colors, that's a good thing, because then I, I can, I'll have longer stretches of, of a single color to use. Right. And, yeah, well, and we'll probably talk about this more on, on a show, but if you don't like a color in the, you can always just cut it out or use right. it you know, you know, use it to tie under or whatever. You don't have to use it. Right. Yeah, that's what I mean about manipulating colors. Yeah, if I if I just don't like one, then that'll be the, the tag that goes underneath and uh, what comes up is the color I want, yeah. So, so yeah, I'm happy with these. Uh, as happy as I was looking at the picture, um, I think... Uh, Yay, Kathy. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But I, I think, you know, I think the part of, of this discussion is, is exactly what Gay Ann was trying to achieve. I'm going to put us both back on the screen. Um, okay. Was what Gay Ann was trying to achieve uh, was for us to look at these things and experiment and make it our own, but, but within a safe framework. Right. Yeah. So, you know, right, you... and I, I, I think that that's the. Uh, I'm gonna scoot you forward, so I'm not so short. Sorry. <laughs> here I can. What is I going on be... here? Here, just let me let me do something. I'll be shorter. Yeah. How's that? <laughs> that <laughs> there. doesn't help. Okay. Oh, but just see my head. All right, anyway, sorry. I think that's right, and I'm just. While we were talking, I was starting to manipulate my thread. Ah. So uh -huh. I had to start playing with it and seeing <laughs> what colors are there, because I. I think that's part of the fun of this piece is yeah. what can I use? What, you know, what can I change here a little bit to make this work? Right. Now, now something that uh, comes to mind as, as we're talking here is to, um, is to make a little chart. Now, Debbie Rowley, uh, one of the things I love about her charts is she makes a little grid. And so the colors that she uses for her model are listed on one side and then she has blanks on the other side for the colors that you would choose. And I think in this instance, I know I will, uh, I'm going to uh, figure out what Gayanne used in her instructions and make a, make a little grid and then uh, put in my threads on the right so that I have a reference as we go through the chart. And, uh, right. uh, and then that will get matched up with the uh, round threads that she's using or the Crinex or whatever it might be, different thicknesses. Right. Yeah. Right. 
and and then and a lot of times if I I will change my mind while I'm working on something and I'll I'll just stick a post-it note or something on there and say or write on the chart itself you know pull the paper out of my page protectors and make a little note I ch I didn't use this round thread I didn't use even if it was something I thought I would use right I, you know I've changed it at this spot you yeah know? yeah yeah because you might use it in another spot but in this one you yeah you switched out yep mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. yeah I think uh, that that uh, these kinds of projects the instructions become working instructions where you're making notes on the side keeping track of what you've tried you know because right. that's the other thing oh I tried this it didn't work well make a note so you don't repeat that mistake um, right. you know those kinds of things yeah write in pencil right. <laughs> so you can erase. Right, right. Mark yeah. through. Uh, that didn't work. Um. Right. But <laughs> it's, work, but yeah, yeah, worth worth the notes. Um, mm -hmm. Or if you teach yourself some little uh, trick doing a stitch, make a note of that so that you have that as a reference too. You know, right. this, this right. stitch I was having trouble with, but then I tried it this way and it came together. Yeah. Yeah. Right. You can so. have it later. So that way when you put the project down and a year later you pick it back up, Right, right. Do. Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> your notes. And exactly. And then like in this one here, you come back later and say, hey, I want to do an ornament out of that. Then then you have uh, your notes that you would normally forget. You'd forget right. what you did. Yeah. Right. So right. It's um, much easier to have notes. Much easier. Yeah. So I think that does it, huh? Um, yeah, that's fun. I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be yeah. great. Yeah. Some interesting threads too. Fun, fun mm -hmm. threads. Yeah, not your standard, Maybe. not your standard DMC yeah. <laughs> floss. Yeah. Get, right, right, right. Play with a little especially bit. Especially you with, especially you with all those rainbow gallery threads. Those are. Yeah. Those are fun ones. Yeah. No. They're, yeah. They're going to be fun, and their um, their silk pearls are nice to work with anyway. Um, so that uh, that's and this Bravo now this is a cotton. Four ply cotton. Uh, I've oh, never stitched with it. Four ply, it says. Well, that's nice because then if you find the run you like, you can do it in all four corners. Whereas that's going to be the problem with watercolors. You've got to, right. if you want it to kind of match, we've got to do a little manipulation on it. Right. Well, and that's why I was so glad that there's these long stretches of one color for that very reason. So there's uh, four strands. Of that one color so yeah if I want four corners that look the same I can easily do that without wasting mm -hmm. a bunch of thread yeah yeah right right and 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 a lot of times on these geometrics it does look better if you can get them similar they don't have to be exact but right. similar yeah yeah like four colors the bulk of it is is a color but on the fringes and edges, it might fade in and out. Well, that ties it into the other, you know, the rest of the piece. Right. But those corners are nice dark colors or nice light colors to frame. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. Yep. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. Right. So, all right, I think we did it. And on top of it, I got this real nice piece of cloth. It's not ribbon. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Uh, so, right. okay, so then next steps, all right, so we have this. So next steps is to figure out, to match up uh, the threads that we have with what Gayanne used, just so we have a reference point as we go through the instructions. Uh, you've already done it, but I need to uh, get this in a binder and in plastic sleeves. And then right. um, to get our thread in, in plastic bags or however we're going to uh, use it and protect it. You know, part of it is protecting mm -hmm. it. So to get that ready, and then uh, and then mount the cut the piece, or it, like yours is already cut, but now you're black. You're going to have to cut that, right? I'm yeah. going to have to cut it because I don't think I want to work on that big of a piece. No, and then we'll come back here shortly with instructions, and 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 we'll mount uh, mount the uh, canvas on stretcher bars so people can see how to do that. And uh, I got to go get some tax somewhere. Um, so I don't have any tax left. So yeah, I, I found some. I found some in my stash. I was, I was like, woohoo! <laughs> yeah, I'm completely out. Um, yeah. yeah, I'd have to unmount several things to have enough tax. So, but um, uh, we'll 
yeah, so we'll come back uh, shortly with that and that uh, and you know how to find the center, uh, different techniques for that, and then um, uh, yeah, then we can start stitching. But it's it's all this prep work that's worth it uh, because down the yeah. road you're gonna you're gonna end up doing it anyway. So do it up front. Um, Right. Right. particularly right. putting these in notebooks you're gonna you're gonna so <laughs> and 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 bagging and doing something with the threads this is yep. different than floss that you wind on bobbins i mean you can see you cut a length and i always save them i always save the little bits because yep. you never know you know you might have to take something out you might run out of the thread you might need that last little bit to yep finish something and then I keep them all together and and it's all that one project yeah yeah this is them put away yeah unlike a, a reproduction sampler or something if you've not done counted canvas work do not sit down and cut a whole bunch of threads one length mm -hmm. you will regret mm -hmm. it by five minutes in you'll regret it because you'll discover you're doing a stitch where you want a longer length of thread so you don't have to start and stop. And that's the other thing, you know, people say, well, yeah, but it'll wear thin. Uh, with a lot of counted canvas work, the stitching, you don't go in and out nearly as much as you do with cross stitch. Like right. you, you, could cover, you could cover a decent area and your threads might go in a fraction of what you would, would with a length of, of uh, silk for counted cross stitch or for cross stitch. Right. So yeah, so don't right. freak and out, yeah. And you're using a, you want to make sure you use a big enough needle. Um, I think he's, I would use a 22 on my canvas. Yeah, yeah. To make the holes. And I think, what would you use? 22, 24? Well, I'll probably be at 24. I'll have to see, because I've not ever stitched on this ground cloth. So I'll have to see if it's going to be 24 or maybe 26. But my guess is it'll be 24. Just looking at this, um, uh, no, I'm not going to try and dig out needles right now, but no, no. my guess is it'll be 24 to have a big enough eye so I'm not dragging the thread because now this, this is, um, I mean, this is very much a, a, a linen feel and so that's going to be coarse in there. So I'm going to have to make sure that I open the hole enough that I'm not uh, dragging the thread a lot. Right. right. So. Right. Especially some of those silk pearls and stuff. You don't yeah. want it to drag in there and. Yeah, to make a big enough hole to go through, like the the watercolors, they need a, a nice big needle. Right. You're only using one strand, but and and also the vineyard silk. You know, it, it's a it's a soft thread, so you want to make sure that hole is big enough so it's not dragging and fraying. Right. So, so um, yeah, so you, I think we'll we'll both probably end up using needles bigger than we than we initially think. Uh, mm -hmm. But I'm gonna I'm gonna shoot for 24 to start and see how it, how it plays out. Yeah, yeah, and and different threads may require a different uh, needle too. We'll have to just have to see. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Then pearl. Yeah. The pearl number eight. We'll need a smaller needle just so I don't lose dropping my needle all the time. Right. And yeah. Well, and that's why I have like I'll put on my needle minder. I'll have a, a couple of sizes of needles when I'm doing counted canvas work. I'll have a couple sizes because I'll change back and forth depending on how, how it's going. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Right. So. so, but we'll talk all about that. We'll get this all set up and yeah. ready to go. Yay. It's going to be fun. Going to be fun. So, mm -hmm. um, okay. So that uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up and then we'll be back um, uh, and we'll kind of recap as we get our things set up and then we'll uh, mounting on stretcher bars or uh, Q-snaps, now see this stuff here, this, this would probably work on Q-snaps without any trouble at all, because it's flexible enough. Uh, so I might even look at that, uh, though I'll probably put it on stretcher bars, but this could go on Q-snaps easily, and this could go on, uh, on scroll bar too, um, without any trouble at all. But I've got I've to test a little bit, but I'll probably end up on stretcher bars, uh, just because it's easier. I think, yeah, I like this stuff. Glad I bought a chunk. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, that's it. Uh, we'll be back. We'll keep you informed. You know, the, the Wednesday shows are, uh, the Wednesday stitch hours are a good place to keep up with us. 
So watch those either live or after the fact as we work our way through this project and then we'll have other shows like this that are uh, uh, set aside, isolated just for this project. So, all right. All right. I think we did it. Thanks everybody. All right. Bye.